Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com. We got another episode of VW for Dummies. This is a 1969 convertible Beetle that we did a find a bug on. Guys, if you're interested in my find a bug program, go to my website, ClassicVWBugs.com, and I can find you a bug in this condition based on your budget, time frame, uh, characteristics, that sort of thing. Uh, my client uh, from California wanted a 1969 convertible beetle with black top black interior and this is what we found for him already restored and we did do some minor repairs to it to get it up to shape and that's what we do with my program we make sure these cars are turnkey for you so anyways VW for dummies what I like to do is let's go around this car and kind of just show you the operations of the car a lot of people even though these are older cars and as simple as they were back then people just uh Sometimes they're in a little bit of the dark in today's day on how certain things operate. So I'm going to go around this car quickly and uh, just show the operation. So, all right, Steve, let's do blinkers first, passenger and driver. Make sure just to show everything works. Okay. Yep. So a lot of times these cars come in and just electric does not work. So we make sure we go through all the electric for you. Headlights. Be tough to see in this sunny day right now now to do the brights on this model car you would pull back on the turn switch to put the brights on uh, that's the high beams that's low got it let's make sure your horn works beep, beep. nice and loud <laughs> how about the uh, wipers so these, in these years, would be a two-speed wiper, so you do have two modes. There's slow, and then you got fast. That's about the speed, guys. So <laughs> and there's your wiper knob on the dash there that Steve is pointing to. Okay, let's take a look at the backlights. Driver's blinker. Yep, passenger blinker. Okay. And then, of course, in these years, you have the push button that started in 65. So just to open the deck lid, nice and easy. There's our 1500cc engine for the 69 Beetle here. Now, and a lot of people, guys, will just slam this deck lid down. I don't do that. I go down and just lock it like that. Many people just slam those suckers, and I just, I don't do that. Let's take a look at the brake lights. Very good. How about our running lights? Very good, so they are dimmer than the brake lights, of course, but they are on. It's daylight right now, so it might be tough to see them. And then also you have your light under here for your license light. And on these late years with the padded dash, they have those vents, those vent knobs right there. Yep, those just turn left and right. That just closes the vent air circulation on the top of the dash vents. Hazard lights. There you go. Those should be front and rear, as you see right here. Yep. Yep. In 68, okay. they started the gas door on the outside of the passenger side of the car, and underneath there is a pull. There's a little loop-de-loop, -loop, little handle there. You pull that out, and then that releases the door. So I'll close this, I'll have Steve operate it again. That's it, that's how <laughs> you now insert your gas. Now something I really didn't like in these years is in 69, they actually made the trunk pole to open the trunk in the glove box door, I guess for safety purposes. So if somebody broke in, you could lock that key, but there's the pole right there and you're gonna pull downward on that and that should pop your trunk. A lot of times that cardboard glove box insert brakes and that pops our trunk okay so there you go now again a lot of people like to slam these trunks you really don't have to do that I just like to grab my handle just go down and it locks that's it we are locked doesn't take much force it shouldn't take much force if you're forcing it too much then there's an alignment problem now, convertible like we have here, when it comes to putting the top up, 
Uh, and these years you actually have an adjustment on the top, which is pretty good when it when it mounts when it attaches to the front windshield. So uh, before you put the top up, it's always a good idea to put the rear quarter windows up first. Uh, it's kind of difficult on a Beetle when you put the top up, and then roll the windows up as the top is already up. It tends to catch and bind on the rubber seals that are on the top frame. So uh, I do like to put my rear windows up first, and then we can close the top. So if you have a convertible top boot, the first thing you're going to have to do is just pop those snaps off, of course. There's one there, and then one usually on the inner hinge. As you can see uh, right there, there's a button on the inside there. Okay, and then on these new boots, we put straps. So you see this is a nice finish here that you have on the strap. So we put these hooks on these nylon straps that hook to the back of the backrest. There's two holes in the cardboard and we let these hooks hook into the backrest. Some people put hooks behind on the, on the, the back firewall, but instead of drilling any more holes, we figure we just hook it to the back of the, there's those hooks, let's show those hooks there. You get hooks like that, put them on those straps, and hook it to the back of the backrest here. There's, there's holes, there's like breather holes in the back of the cardboard. So then this boot comes off. Okay. So let's just fold that up, put it behind the back seat, or put it on the back seat, whichever works. Go to close your top. And you see then the top will rest on the rear quarter windows. Much, much better way of closing your top. So, and then your front here is just a hook, this hook right here. And that's adjustable, so you can turn this hook to how loose or tighten you want to make it. And then there's a slot right here. So that's where that hook goes. Oh, let's see if you can see that. Yep. Put that hook in and then this goes up just like that and now you're hooked that's how you hook now that's the adjustment so if it's too tight you know that could be you know an issue with the doors closing now a lot of times when you're closing the top on a convertible that tends to squeeze the car together depending how tight you are over there so the doors will most likely cut uh, shut differently when the top is up or when it's down when it's down, it seems to shut a lot easier than it does with the uh, top closed. Uh, but you might have to see a little bit more force maybe. And there you go. And that's it. But if you want to loosen that, like I said, you just turn that hook over here and that would ease the tension this way more. So maybe it wouldn't be so tight on the convertibles. Convertibles over the years, they just tend to shift and uh, reshape themselves over time, you know, because again, these are 50 plus years old cars and uh, convertibles are notorious for, for that kind of an issue. But this car is actually pretty good. The lines are actually really nice. Lines are straight, the gap is really good. A lot of times on convertibles, the gap closes. So, but uh, yeah, there we go. Now in the rear engine area, um, You'd be surprised, guys. I get people that ask me, where's the oil dipstick <laughs> on the engine? But it's just right there. You pull that out, and then you want the oil to be at the top of that line or just, just below. It's just fine. They have a middle line there. If you hit that middle line, that basically means you got to put a quart in. So remember, two and three quarter quarts of oil, basic 1030 weight oil or straight 30 weight oil, nothing fancy. Uh, even the cheapest oil you can get is better than the oil they used to have back then. So. Um, you are fine with that. Some people ask me where to jack up the car. God forbid they were to break down. Now Volkswagen had a default position which was right here on the support rail. If you can see that here, there's a square section here that the old school jack would go into for, uh, for convertible for uh, the sedan. It was actually attached to the floor pan itself, but you would jack it up here. If you don't have the old school floor jack, you can always use a standard jack and jack it up right here. That does both front and back. There's only one jack. Right, so if you jack it up here, that will lift basically the whole side of the car. Right. Now when it comes to starting these cars, it's again a carbureted engine. So usually what we do is I hit the gas pedal twice, and then you should, with the flick of the key, it should just start. Give it a little gas, and you start up. If you're pumping and pumping and pumping, you could be flooding it, and that could be the issue with it not starting. 
and then you got to just let the car rest a little bit but usually two pumps of the gas pedal i turn the key and our cars start without an issue so now we're going to be shipping this to california one thing i like to tell people is if you are buying a car out of state and you're having it shipped in be cautious uh, i would check the oil dipstick immediately because many times the cars will get shipped on a tilt on the truck so if the nose is up for a long period of time on the truck and too much of an incline the gas will spill past the needle and seat on the carburetor and go into the oil and then that's a problem you need to drop that oil immediately so when you check your dipstick if the oil level is way above the uh, default line or the full line smell that oil if it smells like gas you need to drop it so, but, uh, remember no power steering no power brakes this is drum brakes on these cars so there's a little more effort to stop the steering is tight sometimes on them i mean if you're just sitting here and you're trying to turn the steering wheel when you're parked um it, it can be a little you know troublesome sometimes for some people but today we're used to power steering power steering fluid in our cars and the steering is a lot easier uh, but again these cars are very very manual so uh, just one thing to note here's your standard sapphire radio remember just am <laughs> you want some old school sounds guys this is what it's all about there you go personally it's just one little speaker over there that's it just one speaker so personally what i like to do is keep the standard radio in there even if it's just for show even if it doesn't work and personally with today's technology you don't have to put a new radio in you got your cell phone you get yourself a bluetooth speaker and you can uh, listen to tunes uh, through your phone and uh, if you get a parcel shelf that goes on the bottom here i usually put my speaker on the parcel shelf and then you can listen to music with the bluetooth speaker Thank you.